All right, guys, good morning. We are gonna have a great episode today. We're talking nothing but slip floats, minnow fishing, the spawn, that's what it's about. You see this water, that's us. You see this steam rising from the lake. This is a great indicator that the water temperatures of a lake are changing drastically. And we're gonna walk through everything in regards to throwing a float. Everything down from the rod to actually the storage of your minnows. And we're gonna start right there with that, guys. I store a bulk amount of minnows on my dock. Those minnows stay right there. I manage those, I make sure that they feel really good. If it gets too hot outside, what I will do is I will actually bring those minnows inside and put those in a refrigerator, one up in my garage. But what I'm gonna fish with today is actually in this minnow bucket. And this minnow bucket is powered with a lithium Engel bubbler. Nothing beats this bubbler, guys, no joke. Rather than having to deal with um, batteries, those D batteries, such a pain in the butt, this lithium rechargeable uh, bubbler is fantastic. And again, as you see here too, we have a 19 quart Engel cooler. Now this is an older guy. Hey, no joke, this is an older guy. You can use the big, if you just wanna go with one, but I have, I just bring the smaller guy, it saves room in the boat, and it's perfect for me. So I put what I think I need out of the, of the, out of the bigger angle right here, put in the small guy, and this is what we're gonna fish with today. So let's get out there. We're gonna talk about everything. Slabs are going in the boat, guys, and we're gonna have fun doing it. Uh, and your first fish is a bass. That's the thing about minnows. They will catch everything. Mm. Now, I, I did watch that on the live scope. Um, beautiful black crappie coming in. And I do partially play the live scope and the float, and that's just probably out of habit, always looking at the live scope. Beautiful fish right here, guys. And so I think working that combination is great, but obviously going old school and not watching it at all is perfectly fine as well. That's a beautiful fish right there, guys. Beautiful fish. All right, guys, let me just walk you through the setup. I use a Kamel float. A Kamel float, which is actually a split float has two pegs some people might call it a cigar float um, I go with the one and a half inch which I think you could actually go a lot larger just so that it can sit really nice and clean on top but I like it to barely sit on top when I put it with a combination of a number seven split shot and a number four hook that's my setup I use sniping braid the Comet um, love it still use braid when I do this but I certainly think mono and flora would also be a great option again a number seven I'm sorry number four hook and sometimes I do put a slight bend on it backwards, so it kind of opens up the mouth to it, which I think does add to it. Now, using the, the brand new, uh, the King's Tail, this is an eight foot casting rod. This is an incredible casting rod. Nice wide eyelets, um, nice gold, nice finish. And this is a great, great casting rod. Medium action with a fast tip. Um, and I think that's what's preferred when we're casting these floats and especially during this spawning system season. I can easily replace, put my paddle tail and go with, with what I really prefer is, is just throwing a plastic because again, I'm all about efficiency. And so when I can get away with a plastic, I'll do that. This. Oh, by another great one. Right there, guys. Awesome. When I fish for spawning crappie, I'm targeting any type of structure, any type of shade, 
Uh, I like rocks. Um, for example, we're fishing up against rocks right now. Um, and really the process of finding these fish is pretty simple. You're just gonna travel around your lake and, and troll and actually just continually flip until you run into a pile of them. Now using live sonar, that also makes it a little easier. I look for movement on the live scope. Um, I'll show you a little footage here of it, what you're kind of looking for. You're looking for fish moving around structures, but from the naked eye, what you're looking for are rocks, structure, shaded areas, anything like that. So guys, right here, weed edge, perfect. Great targets for spawning fish with a float. Now guys, there are different types of float sizes. sizes. And I wouldn't say that mine's necessarily the perfect setup, but it definitely works for me and everybody's gonna have their different opinion on what the float setup is. A slit float is fantastic because I can put it on and off, but a slip float is fantastic from the standpoint that if you feel like you're gonna have a long leader or you want a completely straight drop from your float, and for example, if you're fishing up against a weed edge or so, a slip float is actually a great application as well. So I, do, I use those as well. Uh, they are Kamel. Let me see if I can find one here real quick for you. Now, when I use a, a, uh, a slip float, I love this version right here. Okay, it's a cigar slip float. I believe it, it's a two inch slip float. Comes with the red beads, etc. It allows that bait to drop straight down on a weed edge rather than when you go with the style that I go with right now, it pendulums in and sometimes you can't get that straight drop and you can't drop really close to that weed edge. But also these are fantastic for when you wanna fish deeper so that you don't have to have a six, seven, eight foot leader underneath the float. Um, and so these are really nice. Now they, they, they're not easy on and off, and that's again why I use a slip float. Just efficiency that matters a bit, it matters a lot to me.